scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It's beyond the songs, hallelujah. It's beyond the songs. Connect with us and know what the Holy Spirit is doing in the Spirit. Hallelujah.
Yeah. 
shall we give God all the praise for 2014? Just express <laughs> your praise and thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for 2013, for the mighty things that you did in our midst. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you for being in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll just take about 10 minutes to really appreciate God. I want us to start this year with a depth of thanksgiving for just one thing. We cannot begin to count the miracles and the mighty things that God did, but just one thing. The Bible says, He went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed, for God was with him. Just one scripture, John 3. John 3, verse 2. We're going to thank God for his presence. John 3. It's an incredible year, but we need to give God thanks. Hallelujah. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know who thou art. A teacher come from God. Read the remaining part. One to go. For no man can do these miracles except God be with him. No ministry can make an impact like this except God be with them. Jesus told them that no kingdom divided against itself shall stand. Hallelujah. He said, how can Beelzebub cast Beelzebub? But he said, if I by the finger of God Doeth these things. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word, not their word, the word with signs following. Hallelujah. I like us as a family of faith to just thank God for 2013. We cannot begin to count the mighty things. The revelation, access to truth. The supernatural way that God brought people to this place. Don't take it for granted. Bless him. What he did for your family, the healings, the miracles, the salvations, the transformations. Bless him. Inside and outside, no matter how far you are, make sure you are giving him praise. Thank you. Thank you, we have no right to expect anything for 2014. If we are not grateful for what he has done for us, we give you praise. For your word, for divine help. He said, if the Lord had not been on our side now may Israel say thank you Jesus for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. For the things you have done and the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. For the things From the depths of your heart for the things you have done the battles you have won only you are worthy of our praise we magnify your name just lift up your voice and say lord thank you for your presence 
That's the greatest asset we have. Beyond anointing, beyond skills, beyond revelation, we thank you for your presence. I've said it again, men can fake power, but you cannot fake the presence of God. Make sure you are praying. Let there be a song of praise in your heart. Sing praises, declare. Lord, thank you. I want you to take a quick look at January, February 2013. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. For preservation, we say thank you. For wisdom, we say thank you. For protection, for security, for prosperity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to thank him for this year, 2014. Because I'm telling you, it says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The glory of the latter house. And when I'm talking about that house, I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about you, the glory, the glory of my life. Oh, yeah. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I know the power of the Lord is risen upon me. Greater glory. I see the glory of the Lord. I'd like you to see a new dimension in your life. I'd like you to see a new level the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the glory of the Lord. I see the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. So I rise and shine. I rise My light has come. risen and you will see wonders this year i believe it hallelujah 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 just one scripture before we sit down amos chapter 3 amos chapter 3 Amos chapter 3 verse 3 The glory of the Lord is risen upon me Hallelujah the Bible says, it shall come to pass in that day. Not this scripture, and I'm just quoting something else. He said, the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted above all other mountains. And as a result, all nations will flow. Hallelujah. Amos 3 verse 3. Can we read one to read? Answer the question. This is a question the Lord is asking you this year. Can two walk together? In other words, are you ready to move at my pace? We can't walk together if you do not agree with me. There are many things that the Spirit of God wants to communicate, but he said, can two walk together? 
I want to walk with you. There are great things. Jesus speaking said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. He said, he will guide you in all truth. He will take up the things that are mine and he will show unto you. And so God, the first question God is asking us in 2014 is that can we walk together this year? Because you argued with God last year. The Bible says they limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible began to speak to us about the Sabbath, the rest of God. He said they perished in the wilderness. They perished in the wilderness. Because when the word of the Lord came, they doubted, can God make a table? Where will he get the materials to make the table? And the Bible says they limited God and God in his anger swore that they shall not enter my rest. And the Bible says there remained this same rest for the people of God. Although they are the people of God, there remained this rest. He said, let it be that today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation in the wilderness. They limited God. There remained a rest. There is a Sabbath. There is a seventh day that the Lord wants to initiate his people. He wants to bring them out of somewhere. I want you to believe what I'm saying. And the scripture the Lord says I should ask us is, can two walk together? Not you and your friend. Can you walk together with the Holy Spirit this year? To say, I may not understand how you will do this. But I know you will do it. walk together. Will you finally agree with the Holy Ghost that he can take you from where you are? Will you finally agree with the Holy Spirit and say Lord this year I'm not an unbeliever. I refuse to debate and argue whether I understand. Listen, this is the year you will keep aside the, the, the limitation that comes from logic and intellectualism. Hallelujah. To say, Lord, show me how one plus one will become ten. It's irrelevant. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am. one question the Lord is asking. Is there anything too hard for me to do? God this year, help me sound people. I want you to believe. Believe that God is able. Hallelujah. If you can answer this question tonight, then God is set to get the ball rolling. See, especially for those of you outside, I hope you are following. Don't let anything limit you. Many of us last year were just spectators. Just debating. Can God really do this? Can God really do that? There are some of us who are coming here for the first time. You've heard about the things. Let me tell you, your unbelief, the Bible says, shall their unbelief make the faith of God of non-effect. That means your unbelief will not stop God from being God, but it will stop you from entering that new level. So can two walk together? Can two walk together? I'd like you to pray one prayer and say, Lord, I'm ready to walk with you. I believe you inside and outside. No matter how far you are, make sure you are praying. Don't be distracted. Lord, this is the year that I'm a believer. Logic will not stand my way. 
the challenges and failures of last year will not stand my way I don't want to be a fool I believe you I choose to walk with you I choose to walk with you Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you something. I must let you know that our yearly prophetic words are not just a mimicking of what churches do. Hallelujah. I've made it a culture for years while many people are celebrating their Christmas laughing and enjoying i'm traveling with the lord finding out what the word of god is i i need you to know that we respect god and we honor god when you see us bring words like this trust me god spoke to us hallelujah the bible says that which i tell you in the secret place declare thou on the mountain top so it's not just some way okay december 31st what do we do? no no hallelujah you don't need to be in 2014 to manifest as light or to have dominion. It has nothing to do with 2014. Hallelujah. When you believe the reality of God, you walk as light and dominion. But it's always been our culture as a ministry. See, let me tell you, the secret of the hand of God upon our lives is we always find out what God is doing globally. And we plunge into the global frequency of the spirit. Not just what God is doing across territories. It's always our culture to find out. What are you doing? The Bible says there were certain men called the sons of Issachar. They took time to understand the times. He said he made light to signify times and seasons. Hallelujah. And so it's our, it's our job to be able to... There are many people who preach that at the end of the year into the new year is irrelevant you go and read the bible why he made stars to signify times and seasons as far as the earth realm is concerned it functions with times and season eternity does not work with time but the earth realm is bounded by time that's why the prophets will speak and say according to the time of life the bible will say in the seventh year of the fifth month of this and that god did this God is a God of prophetic timing. Hallelujah. And so I need you to understand that in this season, there are certain things that God is doing across the earth. There are certain things God is doing in the continent of Africa. There are certain things he's doing in the nation of Nigeria. And there is a role we have to play. It is this role that is encapsulated in our theme for the year. This is why many ministries have different things that God told them. Hallelujah. And so the first revelation about a prophetic word is that it shows you God's expectation for you for the year. It's not just about receiving. It's an indication of responsibility. That there is a role that you have to play. Oh, I sense the presence of God so strong. There is a role you have to play. Are you following me now? And there are blessings that are attached when you diligently follow that role. We are not confused at all. I was telling the leaders during our meeting, and I told them that this is not the kind of ministry that is always doing new things every year. All we are concerned about, I pray the prayer and say, Lord, I don't want fame. All I want is impact. Impact upon the body of Christ. Many armed robbers in Nigeria were famous for causing catastrophe. Hallelujah. What we want to see is impact. Hallelujah. A year of light and dominion. This is what the mouth of the Lord has declared and he will bring it to pass. Ours is to believe and to be guided accordingly. And so my job today is to open up the theme and prepare our hearts and watch 
the things that the Holy Spirit will do. But the question, God asked me this question. And he said I should ask the house. Can two walk together? There are no two people that can walk together when they disagree. Somebody must succumb to another person's will. Is that true? So this is not the year you will expect God to dance to your tune. This is the year you will die and let him have his way. And then you will see the wonder-working power of this God that we serve. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. Please hug everyone around you. Happy New Year. Inside and outside, make sure you greet somebody with a great smile and sit down. Let's just get to the word very quickly. Hallelujah. Never forget, it's a year of light and dominion. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for what God, what God is doing in our midst. We give him all the praise for his presence. Moses said, if your presence goeth not with us, do not take us from here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a year of light and dominion. That's what the Lord spoke to us. And I'll be sharing on light. I'll be opening us up to the revelation. What, what is the meaning of this word? Hallelujah. Oftentimes, God communicates his intentions in coded languages and messages. Hallelujah. He would put it and grant grace that that revelation be opened up. When there is an opening of God's word, we can believe and we can walk in that reality. Hallelujah. So what is the meaning of it being the year of light? What does that mean? Just keep the issue of dominion first. What does it mean? What's the light about? Hallelujah. A year of light. There are two dimensions to this prophetic word as being light, a year of light. The first is that God wants us to have light. And the second dimension that is that he wants us to become lights. So he wants us to have, hallelujah, and then he wants us to become. The first dimension is the inner workings of light in and through us. And then the second dimension is what we will become to the world. And, and I'm going to just share very quickly. Hallelujah. So God wants us to have light. You cannot become what you are not. I mean, you cannot reflect what you are not. Is that true? And so he wants us to become. To as many as believe in him, he gave them power to become. He gives you power to become. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 119 verse 130. Psalm 119 verse 130. Please make sure you're writing. What does it mean to have light? What is light? What is God really saying? When he says it's a season, it's a year of light. What is his expectation? What is in the mind of God? Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit can search the mind of God and make known unto us the accurate intentions and counsel of God. Psalm 119. The entrance of thy words giveth light and it giveth understanding to the simple. He said the entrance. Can we have other versions? Is that possible? Okay. Uh, 
Let's try New Living Translation. NLT. Put it beautifully. The teaching of your word gives light. Hallelujah. The teaching of your word gives light. So even the simple, even those who are void of understanding. Hallelujah. The entrance of thy word. Question. If you pick up your Bible and read, it didn't say the seeing. It didn't say the speaking. He said the entrance. So, how can what you are reading enter you? This is a mystery. He said, if it does not enter you, it cannot give you light. It can be stored as scripture, but it only becomes light if it enters you. The entrance of thy word giveth light and even understanding to the simple. So, what is the revelation behind light? Write it. The first revelation behind light is that light symbolizes supernatural insight into scriptures. Supernatural insight. When God says it's our year of light, that means he's granting us unusual access into scripture. Insight. Uncommon insight. Opening us up to understand the hidden mysteries. The hidden mysteries that are encoded in scripture. Now you may ask, why do we need these mysteries? You see, because the Bible says God made many lights. Is that true? But he made one light to rule. So there is a relationship between light and dominion. He said he made two great lights. And that light, although there were many lights, the coming of that light enforced its dominion. It ruled in the day and ruled in the night. So, the greater your light, the greater you are able to walk in this authority and dominion. But since that light comes through the word of God, we need insight. Are you following me now? Let's see 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 quickly. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. Second Corinthians 4 verse 6. If you can give us in NLT or the message, anyone that is available. Hallelujah. Please read it. The message. Very interesting. It started when God said, Light up the darkness and our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Jesus Christ. All bright and beautiful. He said, as we saw and understood. Hallelujah. King James says, God who had commanded light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our heart to bring to us the knowledge of the glory of God as seen on the face of Jesus Christ. So light connotes insight, depth of insight. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. We really, really need the light of God. Accurate insight into the word of God. Because Jesus Christ was cautioning the people and he said, be careful lest your light be not darkness. That means be careful so that what you are calling light may not really be darkness. Hallelujah. Luke 11, I believe. Luke 11, 35. Let's look at it. Luke 11, 35. Shiba kabra dusi baladabasha. Just give us an um, amplified. Amplified. Okay. Or you can just leave it. It says, take heed, therefore. Let's start from 34. 34. The light of the body is the eye. Is that true? It says, therefore, when thy eye be single, thy whole body is full of light. But when your eye is evil, your body is full of darkness. 35. He says, be careful, therefore, that the light that's in you is not darkness. There are many people carrying revelations they think is light, but it's darkness. Are you getting me? So God is saying, as you begin to explore the things you are calling light, contend for accurate insight, so that you will not be carrying a revelation that is darkness. Whereas you convince yourself, 
that I have rema. There, there are all kinds of revelations in the body of Christ. And the Lord is saying, be careful. So that what you keep celebrating because of the flamboyancy, be careful. Let you not be beguiled by darkness. I'm telling you the truth. There are many people carrying darkness around because it sounds good and sounds spiritual. Hallelujah. Because when it is light, it should set people free. It should deliver people. It says the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. So this is the year to guard your heart with all diligence. And make sure that that which you uphold and absorb in your spirit is light indeed. For the Bible says it is possible that a man can carry darkness and believe he's holding on to light. Many people have been holding on to dark theologies, dark mindsets, dark philosophies for decades. Many of our family members have held on to teachings that were taught by prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists. They will not let it go. And the Bible says, be careful so that what you are carrying, if it's a terrible thing when you are holding darkness and you want that darkness to bring light, Hallelujah. Supernatural insight. So that God brings us into light indeed. Hallelujah. It's a very painful thing if after many years you find out that what you've held on to and argued all your life was a lie. Is that true? There are many people who have held on to a lot of things. The baptism in the Holy Spirit for instance. There are so many people who have held on to all of these theologies. There's nothing like that. Deliverance for instance. There are many people who have held on to it. Oh, I'm born again. Everything is all right. But there is darkness in this family. And they will not confront it. No, there's nothing wrong. I'm fine. Until they become acute victims. And the Bible says, be careful. So this is the year when you will edit the things that you have kept in your spirit. And throw out anything that is not consistent with the word of God. No matter how long, it will require humility. Because some of us have argued over darkness for a long time. Hallelujah. Number two. Light connotes understanding and comprehension. It's not enough to know. It's not enough to know. You must understand. Job 32 verse 8. Eli who began to speak. And he said, but there is a spirit in man. He said, and the inspiration of the almighty... It didn't say gives men knowledge. Make it men of understanding. There is a difference between knowledge. Knowledge tells you what is available. It creates awareness. Understanding guides you on how to apply it accurately. I've always used the example. Knowledge is that when you want to make jollof rice for instance. You need rice. You need pepper. You, that's knowledge understanding tells you when to combine what ingredient where because that you have rice and you have this does not mean you can cook many people have knowledge that puffs up the bible says ever learning but never coming to the comprehension so we have so many spiritual laws around us but we do not understand what principles are responsible for what so we just use any kingdom principle when occasion serves us when you are afraid, the nearest thing is the blood of Jesus or Holy Ghost fire or, or the anointing of the Holy Spirit or prayer or agreement. All of these things are spiritual keys. And you understanding is the ability to gain mastery over the operation. The operations of the kingdom. It's not enough to know. It's not enough to know. There is a spirit in man. And the breath of the Almighty can make what you know become understanding. He explains to you. He opens it up so that you are not confused. What makes a doctor a consultant? Listen, listen. Almost there are many things that a fresh doctor knows or a consultant knows that the fresh doctor knows but he doesn't have understanding. Praise the Lord. When, when a consultant is carrying out surgery, he doesn't bring a special knife. Is that true? It's the same knife, the same everything. But there is understanding. And this is what many of us need to have. Understanding. 
understanding. So that when you see something happening in your family, you are not confused. You don't panic. You know the exact spiritual law to bring into place. This is what spiritual maturity is all about. Hallelujah. I've said it again and again. The opposite of fear, in my opinion, is not faith. The opposite of fear is understanding. You always fear what you don't understand. There's nobody doubting that the chair you are sitting on now can hold your weight. Is that true? Anything you truly understand, you don't become afraid of it again. A pilot can man an airplane, a big airplane, because he has understanding. And he's not afraid that a tiny man can drive hundreds of people thousands of feet above sea level because of understanding hallelujah somebody else can sit on that plane and say i believe we will not die that you were not afraid and you died courageously does not mean are you getting my point now it's not about dying courageously it's about not dying because at that point you are flying people the plane is nose diving and you're saying i know we will arrive nobody should be still in this plane you are falling Get understanding. Hallelujah. Get understanding. Number three. Light brings direction. And every time there is direction, there is an end to confusion. Direction. Psalm 119 verse 105. Are you getting blessed tonight? So that we don't just say light, 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 light. Direction. The reason why many people run to prophets and apostles and people around is direction. People want direction in every area of their life. Direction. People go to herbalists because they want direction. What is wrong in our family and what is the way out? Direction. So when God says it's a year of light, it means that there is an unusual grace to bring accurate direction to your life. Hallelujah. It says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet, a light to my path. That means an end comes to confusion. Because he will begin to let me see. The Bible says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Not these are the ways, choose. This is the way. Walk ye in it. And he said, you will find rest for your soul. Many of us are trusting God. What job to do? Many of us are trusting God. Where to settle down? All kinds of things. Many of us are trusting. Our family members are confused. What business to do? What can I do? Everybody is asking questions. This year, if you believe God, God is saying, I will come to you. You will hear my voice in the night. God will just come and bring direction. Direction that you've been waiting for years. God will say, this is it. Walk in it. Wise men saw the star from the east. And it began, they began to follow that light. Until they arrived at where Jesus was. No confusion. They followed the light. For as long as they kept looking at the light. It kept directing them. Until it settled. May the Lord take the light and drop where your destiny needs to go and that you will just follow that light into unending levels of blessings and success light oh how we need direction how we need direction hallelujah somebody just gets up and feels like you want to go to saminaka you see there is nothing as terrible as being in a place where god is not because he's not committed to defend you. Hallelujah. Psalm 43 verse 3. Very interesting scripture. Direction. Hallelujah. Where we are today by the grace of God as a ministry. Is a product of divine direction. The ability to hear God. A lot of people say, I can be anywhere and I will succeed. Try it. 
The Bible says whatsoever he does prospers. Whatsoever he does prospers because it is directed. I prophesied as I was commanded, not as I wished, as I was commanded. Hallelujah. Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto your holy hill and unto your tabernacle. Let your light lead me. This must be your prayer. Send your light. Hallelujah. Send your light. Let your light lead me. Hmm. Light means life. L-I-F-E. Connotes life. John 8, 12. If you can have it in the Amplified. John 8, 12. Very powerful scripture. I'm telling you all of the things that are encapsulated in this word light. John 8, 12. Once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in darkness, but will have the light which is... There is revelation that you have that will translate into the quality of your life. Are you getting my point? It says that this light, this year, can bring life to you. They are life to those who find them and health. That means the revelation you get can be what will be responsible for divine health. So that it's no longer an issue of guesswork. Hallelujah. Light. The light you have can put you in command of unbelievable realms of wealth and prosperity. And it can add to the quality of your life. One department came to meet me and we were interacting with them and my heart broke so much. I was talking with them and just asking them their expectations for the year and what they want God to do for their life and family. I think almost everyone, their, their requests were just, or their expectations, intimacy with God and financial breakthrough for my family. There are many families that need the mercy of God. Is that true? It's easy for everybody to wear suit and come and sit down and laugh. But the Bible says, if you follow me, you will get light that will translate into life. Prosperity is a formula. It's not guesswork. It is specific. It is exact. And this is the year that you will know it for yourself. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we are unapologetic about wealth and prosperity. I'm not one of those many preachers that say, no, there's no problem. Just seek God. No. We believe. John Wesley said, any religion that does not cater for the economic well-being of the people is an irresponsible religion. We don't want people coming to worship and bow down and cry only to get up and go into prostitution and arm robbery and occultism because of lack. We don't want to hear that our parents are moving out. Landlords are kicking them out of the house and every kind of thing happening. When you are blessed, it gives you options and you can choose to serve God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are many people who, get, who want to get married. For years they've been trusting God, but there's no money. It's a terrible thing. Many of our family members want to do a lot of things. There are many of our family members, our parents are almost 60, 70 years. They cannot boast of one good house. Not even a good car to help them. It's, not, it's, it's an anomaly. But this year we will change it by the power of the light of God. Remember, God asked you a question. Can two walk together? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Light also means showing forth. Ah, this is the part I love. Light connotes a display, a revelation, a manifestation, an unveiling. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise, shine. 
not because you have entered a new year arise shine because your light has finally arrived that revelation amplified please can we see it isaiah 60 verse 1 amplified puts it in a beautiful way arise from the depression and prostration which circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new life this is a prophecy for somebody he said arise this is a prophecy for a family arise from the depression this degradation that circumstances have kept you he said rise to a new life it says shine be radiant with the glory of the lord why for your light has come arise this is what many of us will be telling our family members. I tell you, this year, this year, some of you will single-handedly go home and just gather your family members and say, salvation has come. What is wrong? What needs to be done in this family? Saviors, the Bible says, shall come out of Zion. It's time, this is the year your Christianity will have practical evidence to your loved ones. Don't blame them for going to Habalist until you can prove that there is a superior government that reigns on the earth. Don't blame them for going to witch doctors. Are you getting my point? Don't blame them for traveling around. We keep criticizing people rather than contending to deliver what is authentic. Let me tell you something. I showed the welfare department. Yeah, that was the department that came to see me. I showed them a video. Pastor Jakes called me and said, Josh, you need to see an incredible video. I said, really? What's the video? And he showed me the link. I I'm sure some of you have heard it. About a lake that just appeared in the east. There was an explosion. And the lake just appeared. And muddy lake. But it seemingly had the power to heal people. Thousands of people at once. They went there. No protocol. No welfare, no suit, nobody called apostle. People were coming from all over. Men, you can keep criticizing. Human beings are too desperate to listen to you. If you cannot bring the authentic light, stop wasting your time. Are you getting my point? Watch the video and see people almost naked. They were videotaping them. They were bathing in the muddy water. That's because we men of God have failed them. We can stand and brag and make noise. And they will listen to us immediately they finish they will travel and continue people were cutting the tree they were cutting the tree in the river just to take home paradventure it will be responsible for healing and prosperity and all of them most of the people there said it has to be jesus how are you going to tell them this thing is demonic when they sat down in your assembly for years and nothing happened are you getting my point let me tell you something. People are more desperate than ever. No rema. There was no man of God that came to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. The people were not daft. They came from all over. They were to an extent, brothers and sisters, that they were digging into the ground. And when they saw water, they just fetched it. People made money selling jerry cans, selling suya, selling, you know, the bike people. The bike people, they were interviewed and they were happy. They said, this has to be God. We've never had it this good. They said, do you plan for this water to stop? Say, why? No. Why? This is prosperity. I mean, ah. We are very unapologetic about the fact that it is God's desire to bless you. Prosperity does not take people to hell. It's materialism that takes people to hell. And materialism is not having materials. Materialism is the influence of what you have on your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Lazarus went to heaven with his poverty. Abraham with his prosperity is still in heaven. It was not too much money or lack of money that took them. Many of the requests of our family members, for some of us, the whole request of our family members, what can bring peace in our entire family is not more than 100,000. And then they go to a herbalist and give him 20,000 and it doesn't work. They now go and borrow 50,000 and give him because they are looking for solution. May you be that light this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We arise and shine. Our light is come. 
for the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. We arise and shine, a light is come. See the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Hallelujah. Insight, understanding direction life is showing forth the bible says that we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light we, we should show forth comes from the greek word doxazo a display of the degree of a king's splendor hallelujah it was the custom of kings in ancient times that when they achieved certain feats they will call people to come and celebrate with them this was the case with king ahasuerus and so he brought them to come and see his provinces this year may the lord make you an object of praise that he will use you as a testament of what he can do with a man hallelujah hallelujah when you have all of this then you can now become the light you can now become the light. What does it mean to become the light? It means to become a standard. It means it, it, to become a pattern. To become a reference. Hallelujah. That when they are looking for a genuine, authentic Christian, you can be a reference. Matthew 5, from verse 14 to 16. Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16. The Bible says, you are the light. Matthew 5, you are the light of the world. The light of this system, cosmos. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That means whatever has covered your light this year must give way. You are a city set on a hill and cannot be hidden. Verse 15 nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket he said but on a lampstand and it will give light because of you many people you will be like the ark of noah that incorporated there are people who are not even born again but because of your presence the 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 span of your light will cover certain people there are many of our loved ones that need us without us they may die and the Bible says it gives life to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let, permit your light. Let it so shine. Before who? Not before trees. God wants your light. That which he has made you become. He wants it to shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your father in heaven. Hallelujah. So as an individual, you will become a standard this year. That you will be a portrait of a balanced Christian. Holy, prosperous, healthy. Genesis 24 verse 1. It says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And God had blessed him in all things. All things. All things. This is the year we will contend for every part of our life. To look like the image of the Christ. Hallelujah. You must contend. Not that you'll be prosperous and be sickly. Not that you'll be healthy. No, no. Every area of your life. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your, heaven, your father in heaven. As a ministry, this is our prophetic destiny. The standard. Isaiah 49 verse 6. Oh, I believe this with all my heart. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from your throne and the earth will hear. Send your word from your throne and the earth will hear my altar is calling you oh god 
my altar is calling you. Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, take my praise. Lord, my worship is calling you. Oh God, my worship is calling you. Hallelujah. God gave me this specific word. I shared it with the leaders. This is what God is going to be doing with us. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant. This is what we have been doing. To raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel but this is the new mandate I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles it says that thou mayest be my salvation not bring it be it you will become a representation of my salvation even to the ends of the earth it says you have been faithful raising people training people building people I now measure a thousand cubits and I increase capacity. He said, I will also, in addition to what you are doing, I will give you as a light. I will give you as a light unto the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what God is going to do this year. And then he will bring us through this light into a realm of dominion. Rulership. Let me show you one very powerful scripture. Zechariah 1.21 Dominion means absolute control. It means rulership. Sovereign authority. The ability to be in charge and to be in control. Hallelujah. This dominion is not just dominion over men. But dominion over first the forces of darkness. Are you getting my point? Then said I, what come this to do? Amplify it please. Can we have amplified? Then said I, what are these horns and smiths coming to do? And he said, these are the horns or powers that have scattered Judah. Judah means praise. There are horns that have stopped families from laughing. There are horns that have kept people down. He said, so that no man lift up his head. There are families and destinies where no man has been able to lift up his head. No marriage, no joy, no prosperity, no increase. Their spiritual lives dead. He said, but these smiths or workmen have come to terrorize them. These are the carpenters that God is sending. Hallelujah. He says they have come to terrorize, to cause them to be panic stricken, to cast out the horns or powers of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah. This is the year you will see the practical displacing of Satan. It will be a contention of light over darkness. Once and for all, the devil will give up over your life and your family. Please believe it. Please believe it. This is what dominion is all about. It's not about being commander-in-chief and telling people, come and clean my chair. This is foolishness. Dominion is the ability to be a light. Hallelujah. He said, those in Nephtha and Zebulun have seen a great light. A great light has come to them. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Distant shores and the islands will see your light.
So there are horns. Remember our teaching, give me this mountain. Brothers and sisters, upon every mountain there are giants. There is a spiritual dimension to this life. Hallelujah. People do not just seek, just succeed or, or experience breakthroughs and increase. But this year, by the grace of God, we will arise because our light has come and we will compel darkness to bow. And all of these horns that have terrorized people and families, they will give way. One scripture, Psalm 110. Psalm 110, sorry, 110, verse 2. A popular scripture. We'll read it together. 110, verse 2. Let's read, it's projected. It says, the Lord shall send the rod. What is that rod? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. That rod is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the comforter. He said, the Lord will send a dimension of the Holy Spirit that will open men to light. And on account of that, he said, rule thou. Not in their absence, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Many of you, your parents have not gone to the village for years because they know when they go, they will die. You are the one who will go and say, let me see the devil. Rule thou. Rule thou. This is the year you speak to somebody and say in the name of Jesus, let that barrenness be over and it leaves at once. This is the year somebody will come and lie down on your bed and get filled with the Holy Spirit and just get up born again filled with the Holy Spirit somebody takes tea in your house and goes back and unending breakthroughs because they just contacted light the Bible says the light shines in darkness rule thou the Lord will send the rod out of Zion see let me tell you your blessing is not authentic until your family members participate in it this selfish Christianity of chop alone, where it, the, the kingdom doesn't work that way. As for me and my... Hallelujah. I went home and I saw dramatic levels of breakthrough in my house. I said, that's right. This is exactly how it should be. Hallelujah. The devil will be under your feet. Hallelujah. This is why we are teaching because the Bible says we should do this. But Hebrews chapter 2 tells us that we do not yet see all things. Remember our scripture? Let's look at it. Hebrews 2. Verse 6 to 8. That's why we need light to enforce our dominion. Hebrews 2. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? 7. Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim and crowneth him with glory and honor thou didst set him over how many all the works of your hands that means nobody can use what was created to do enchantment against me the bible says i've been given authority how can a man use stone or use goat or animal and then make incantations i pity the man that will call my name in a shrine this is the year it will catch fire both the herbalist the person who brought it the Bible says Dagon fell. Dagon fell in the Bible. He has given him authority over all the works. All the works. Hallelujah. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet, he left nothing that is not put under him. But this is a dilemma. I said, but now... We do not yet see all things. Are you seeing why light is important? Without light, there's no dominion. You can claim it, but it may not work. It says the reality now. So it speaks to us about God's perspective. That this is what has been done. But right now, today, we do not yet see all things under his feet. But when light comes, it will grant us access to rule in the day and to rule in the night. Hallelujah. 
you believe this these are the mighty things that God is going to do Nigeria the Lord revealed a few things to me I'm not a prophet but God speaks to me and the Bible says that which I tell you in the secret place declare down the mountain top we need to pray for our government I saw a lot of political chaos in fact a lot of chaos hallelujah we need to pray a lot of chaos need to pray for the president that his life be preserved hallelujah and then the Lord showed me I saw another terrorist group that is even greater than Boko Haram hallelujah and they will begin to be pronounced again and again and this is the wickedness that the devil wants to bring this will not just be nigeria across the entire sub-saharan africa because it's an agenda there is only one resistance to all of this god hallelujah praise the lord I saw so many things I told you last year or in 2007 the Lord told me if you can remember I said an economic recession was going to come and hit the world in a very great way that was when I began to talk of massive kingdom wealth transfer in 2008 I said this is the year and when it happened I said again that this is the first one another one is coming and the Lord told me this year the economic recession will hit again for the second time you can't pray against it you can only exempt yourself it's a written judgment hallelujah it's going to happen very chaotic it will humble the government of nations hallelujah it will humble people a lot nigeria is going to begin to come to the lamb light especially in terms of economics last year i said that Nigeria was going to lead Africa in terms of economic empowerment go and read the newspaper it has happened with over about 400 billion or so ahead of South Africa this is happening God himself is bringing all of this and there will be such a manifestation of deliverance in Nigeria this year this thing called deliverance you will see it in dramatic ways it will no longer just be in churches because of light and enlightenment hallelujah deliverance it will look like an object of mockery but don't you criticize it because it's the, the preparing ground for the birthing of something powerful i told you about ghana south africa and nigeria nigeria is going to is going to do a lot of mighty mighty exploits this year forget about all the stories that people are saying God is faithful hallelujah I also see that the Lord revealed to me a number of things we have to pray against death for many not families here but generally in the country we have to pray against death hallelujah and I saw one of the things that the enemy is doing is infecting people with incurable diseases this one is no longer just hallelujah diseases that medical science may not even be able to detect you just see people just dying hallelujah i don't know when it will happen but i'll keep announcing it i saw the death of somebody who was once a president in this country hallelujah i had seen this two years ago i was there in a vision i saw his obituary and every new year god keeps reminding me i honestly don't know when it will happen but let's watch and see 
Hallelujah. And God is going to be doing great things. This year, we will experience levels of financial prosperity. Write it. Write it, please. Write it. I'm not just talking. Write it. It's one of the things God specifically told me. Specifically. If you don't believe it, no problem. You can believe the other things that we have. But yes, there will be an avalanche of wealth and prosperity. Praise the Lord. We need to pray against death. I saw a lot of ABU lecturers dying. A lot of ABU lecturers dying. This thing started last year. I began to caution this thing. A lot of ABU lecturers, especially professors. We need to pray because it's a demonic thing. It's not just normal. No. It's a very demonic thing. I saw a lot of academic exploits too this year. A lot of mighty academic exploits. Please believe me. Believe me. Recovery, restoration for people. Especially people who have been praying. I want us to pray so I'll just hurry up. I'm just, I don't want to forget anything. Marriages, miracle, mighty, mighty marriages. I saw this one. It was so much I was surprised. Honestly, I saw marriages I was scared. Trust me. We will all live to see it. I don't mean here, Koinonia. Mighty, mighty marriages. Yes. How could I have skipped it? I saw a lot of marriages. Including those who did not even plan it. Yes, I saw surprises. Except, except, look, let me tell you, thank God we'll all be alive to see it. You will see people who did not, it was not part of their goal in January. But the hand of God will move. Just leave God to do what he wants to do. It's a year of light and dominion. That's why God said, can two walk together? Listen. Listen, and this is the scripture the Lord told me. When Abraham took Isaac for sacrifice, there was no lamb yet. But he said, just go Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. And the Bible says, listen, when the obedience of Abraham was tested, he said, just go across, there is a lamb. On the second time, when Jesus needed to enter the city, he said, go to a city called Straight. You will see a code that no man had written on it. Tell them the master has need of it. Believe it. I love saying things before they come to pass. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we will experience levels of expansion and impact. I saw it a lot levels of expansion i saw a lot of people getting blessed from niger niger republic i don't know what it is about that place but i saw so many people from the teachings niger republic so blessed i mean it was a wildfire it was causing a wildfire especially among the young people hallelujah so many other miraculous things that the Lord showed me. We will discuss it as we come, as, as the year. Um, another, oh, I remember, I must say it. I saw something that shocked me. Well, let me just say it. Still about prosperity. I was taken in a vision and I remember I was standing in front of this church. This, the... The Equa Church. And I looked and I saw an array of cars. In my mind, listen, listen. In my mind, I was saying, uh -uh. a lot of cars right from that place down. And I was, I, was, I was wondering. I said, Lord, what is all this one again? 
this is amazing this is what you are going to do for families and for people and many of them will be gifts it will not be something that someone will buy gifts gifts I believe I believe Lord I believe Lord I believe I believe I believe Lord I believe Lord I believe Lord I believe I believe Lord I believe Lord I believe Hallelujah There will be a lot of dramatic manifestations of miracles signs wonders in a scale that will shock you families i saw a lot of unbelievers i saw a lot of muslims coming here i saw a lot of some of our family members that vowed that they will never come here you watch them by themselves you don't need to buy themselves the mighty things that God will do. Mighty things. Mighty things. In the rain, in the sun. Hallelujah. These great things that God will do. Hallelujah. Do you believe these things I'm sharing? Hallelujah. God will do this. For the glory of his name. Praise the Lord. I wanted to say it to him personally, but Bishop, I saw you driving a Camry. Write it. Brown Camry. I've been struggling to tell him. God will bring a lot of prosperity, even in the house. You know, we had been planning for just one bus. You will be amazed. To see what God will do this year amazed amazed not just because of project 10,000 hallelujah see the Bible says when Jesus was born some people saw the light and they started coming with their gifts they came with gold they came with frankincense they came with man and the Bible says they started looking for that star nothing would deter them until they found the baby and they began to drop the gift watch out and see dramatic manifestations people would just be sleeping and God would just wake them and say come and bless the house of God come and bless the work of God hallelujah and I saw this spilling over to many families even restoration restoration supernatural restoration hallelujah very quickly so we'll pray a few resolutions that i want you to adopt this year a few resolutions you need to make up your mind on some things it's not enough to shout amen he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecies that have been spoken unto you so when prophecy comes the Bible says a virgin will bear a son. It never said Mary. Mary made herself available. Huh? The Bible tells us someone was going to betray him, Jesus. He never called Judas. Judas aligned with that prophecy. Prophecy is like rain. If you bring a bucket, you will get water. Hallelujah. Number one. You must have a childlike heart of a learner. This year, 2011, you must increase your passion for insight. You must increase your passion. And this requires meekness and teachability. This is the year you throw away arrogance, MOG, MO, whatever. Just throw it away and humble yourself. Hallelujah. When it was time for Jesus to give them bread, he said, tell the people to sit down on the grass. 
That means if you are too big to sit down, no bread for you. He said, if you are interested in eating bread, sit down. Hallelujah. It says, one thing is needful. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but this one thing is needful, to sit. Not to stand and be staring at the master, to sit. A position that puts you... In ancient times, when a rabbi was teaching, the people sat down. Nobody would stand and be listening to a rabbi. So this is the year that you will sit down. You must have a passion in your heart to learn. Some of you, even when you come out to pray, the way you are praying, we know you are far from God. You cannot even construct a good spiritual sentence. You just mix everything. You just know that this is, you know how politicians talk. When they come on stage, they try to act like they know God. But their addictions betray them. One of the common things in any culture is their language. Hallelujah. Number two, you must have a resolve. You must have a determination to apply and live by the revealed truth. No matter the price and no matter the temporary challenge. You must have a resolve. A determination to apply and live by the revealed truths. These truths that you are hearing, it will not profit you. Please, those outside, make sure you are listening. If you cannot write anything, you can come and meet the media people and they'll give you, our messages are free after the meeting. Apply the things, it's not just what you know, but what you know, what you understand and apply. Hallelujah. Apply the truth. No matter the price. No matter the challenge. Number three. You must have a resolve to place God and his agenda this year. Above every other pursuit. Above every other quest. And above every other ambition. You cannot give God second place this year. Hallelujah. So it's a time for you to go back and search. What have you put above God? There are many of us, you love God, you are born again. But for sure, God is not number one. You must make him above all. The true proof of love and passion is commitment. You cannot claim to love a man or a thing and not be committed. Doggedly committed. And let me use the opportunity to encourage you. Join a department. There are many of you that have been sitting here for one year two years you just come and find the place clean and you just start laughing it's not good you don't know how the chairs are clean you don't know who swept what you don't know where they had the rehearsals and and you are full of potential and grace there is a dimension that only kingdom service can take you into this should be the year many of us are afraid of commitment because we know we don't want to be serious with god you don't want a situation where people will probe your life there are many departments. Make yourself available. Hallelujah. Make yourself available. Huh? So just coming to sit inside and sit outside, immediately they finish the grace, you and your friend, you just run away. Serve the Lord with diligence. Hallelujah. Number what now? Four? Okay, just two more. Resolve to see the glory of God revealed in every area of your life. Make up your mind that this year, I'm not going to celebrate God in one aspect of my life and then have another aspect staring at me. That means you must go and write all the areas of your life. I have a series on prosperity coming, so I'm going to teach on that. But let me give you a preview that there are five areas of your life that you must experience prosperity. The word prosperity comes from the word prosper. It means to do well. First is spiritual prosperity. Second is mental prosperity. If you're a billionaire and you are mad, you are not, that's, that's, it doesn't make sense. Is that true? Number three is your health. Number four is your finances. And number five is your relationships. These five areas. You must contend and tell God this year, I must have rest round about. The glory of the Lord must be revealed in every one of these areas. Five, 
Resolve to enforce order in every area of your life. This is very important. Many of us are so disorganized. This is the year you will grow up. In Jesus' name. Disorganized in every area of our lives. This is the year you bring yourself into a level of decorum. Have order. Hallelujah. One proof of excellence is order. When everything is done decently, when everything is done in order, order means efficient management of your time, your opportunities, your resources. Bring your life under divine order. No wasting of time, no wasting of resources, no wasting of opportunities. You must bring your life under divine order. Hallelujah. And finally, you must make a determination to spend time with God this year in worship, in prayer. Let seven days not pass. Let a week not pass that you will not dedicate at least a day in prayer and fasting. Those who built us spiritually did not teach us that prayer and fasting are part of the tools for efficient spiritual growth. So every time we do it, a lot of people just say, oh, okay, let's fast for 7 days or 21 days or 30 days or 40 days or 100 days or 200 days. And then after that, the people now say, God, I've given you your own share of the year. Leave the other one for me. No. Fasting must be part of your life. At least once in a year. Or once in a week, sorry. Thursdays are a good time to fast. You can fast on Thursdays. Prepare yourself. If you can't fast full day, at least fast half day. Quality half day. Quality half day. Don't wake up by 10 and, and pray by it. See, you remember the resolutions we are making. Some of you are already laughing. This is the year when you will be serious with God. If you want true spiritual power, spend time with God in fasting. Don't let anybody tell you the era of fasting is over and so on and so forth. No, no. Thursdays, for instance, 6 to 12, 6 to 2, 6 to 4, 6 to 6, as God grants you the ability, very soon it will become part of your life. And then you will see the enormous spiritual capacity. He gave unto one five, unto one two, unto one one, not according to their prayer request, according to their ability. The capacity they gave him determined what he gave them. When the man with five increased capacity, he sees it from the person with one and added to him. If you enlarge, when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our priority this year as a ministry will be to build, to equip and empower God's people. Even through these meetings, we will keep on doing what we are doing the hand of God is here. By the grace of God, we trust that this year, God will use this ministry in a very mighty way. Hallelujah. That every week will be a time of an unveiling of deep truths, applicable revelations that you will see transformation in your life. I was praying to God and I was, I think I was discussing with the welfare. I said this year by the grace of God, I plan, I, I, I don't know, I, I, let me not implicate myself here, but I pray that God will help me. Hallelujah. I want to make sure that as much as possible, every Friday I'm around. You see, because my primary assignment is not to the nations around. My primary assignment is to you first. If you are not well fed and I'm around making everybody saying Joshua Selman Koinonia, and my own people are dying here. Reminds me of some of our parents, isn't it? We'll be dying at home and they're donating money in, in foundations and, and charities. Which is good, but make sure your own people are well fed. You can even add that as part of your goals this year. That you will not do anything to anybody outside your family except God instructs that you have not done to the people around. Hallelujah. If you buy chicken for other people, then it means that there's chicken in your house. If God gives you an instruction, it's okay. But where you just get up and starve the people in your house to feed other people, it doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
We trust God that we will experience healings, deliverance, and restoration and breakthroughs even through the power of the Holy Spirit. We really want to take advantage of our counselings, our Monday counselings. From this night, officially, we've resumed work. Our counselling, we want to dedicate time to minister to the people. Our Friday programs, Koinonia, School of Ministry. Uh, more announcements will come on that, but we plan to take the School of Ministry very, very serious. It's a special time we have to train and build our students, our external ministration, media ministry, and so on and so forth. We are doing a lot uh, in Koinonia this year. And as other instructions come by, we will comply accordingly. Hallelujah. Say after me, this is my year of light. It's my year of dominion. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Rise up on your feet. We are going to take some quality time to pray. This is how to establish the prophetic word. We are not rounding up. We are praying. Hallelujah. I want us to take some time to pray. It says, This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you war a good warfare. What does it mean to war a good warfare in prayer? To say, Lord, I receive. This must be part of my life. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Please, I want you to pray instrumentalist. I hope you're ready. We are going to pray very, very seriously. Very seriously. Lift your voice and begin to thank him for the prophetic word. Say, yeah, of light and dominion. Begin to bless him. Thank you for the word, oh God. I believe the word. I believe the word. I believe the word. I believe the word. Make sure you are praying. Outside, everywhere, make sure you are praying. This is between you and God. You are making the word real to you. Lord, is my year of light, my year of insight, increased insight. Rekete koshota baka prekete balarabash. Sheka baka tabalarabash. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word. I believe the word. I will see it manifest in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Supernatural insight into scripture. Say, Lord, open my eyes this year. Lift your voice and pray. Open my eyes, oh God. Show me hidden mysteries. Let there be an unfailing, a revelation of deep kingdom mysteries deep kingdom principles that are responsible for victory, for health, for prosperity that will empower me to be an ambassador indeed. Open my eyes. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching the inward parts of the belly. Open our eyes, so oh God, that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. Rekoto sekete kedeba, man prosko proskele ba kaya da banaraba. Give me revelation. Pray. Paul said, "For this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He may grant unto you the spirit of revelation and understanding, the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light, that He may know." That she may know. Pray. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes, oh God. Hallelujah. Insight. That you will just pick up your Bible and God will show you something that will set you on your feet. It will show you something. That will open you up to a, another world of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. 
two years or three years ago, one time I was praying and the Lord showed me a vision and that thing changed my life forever. I saw like a big, like an ancient door and when I looked at it very well, I found out that there were small, small doors that made up that big door. And when I came closer, it, it was like they zoomed me. And when I came, I found out that on every of those small, small doors, there were scriptures written on it. And the Lord told me that whatever scripture that truly enters you, that door is open unto you. That means what is possible for Sam uh, may not be possible for Folake. Are you seeing that? The difference is that the light you are seeing is not sufficient to open that door. But the Bible says, I have set before you an open door. No man can shut it. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. We are going to pray for understanding. It's not enough to have insight. Listen, listen. Take this prayer point seriously. You are going to say, Lord, all the principles that are responsible for the various areas of lifting. Show me how they work. Show me how they work. Lift your voice and pray. Show me the keys of wealth, oh God. Show me how to operate it. Show me the keys of the anointing. Show me how to access the fountains of spiritual power. Show me the keys of holiness. Show me the keys of deliverance. Show me the keys that will make me command power even in my family. Make sure you are praying, understanding, and with all you're getting, get understanding. Know how it works. Know how it works. It's not enough to have keys. Know how to apply it for maximum results. Pray. Pray. Show me, oh God, the keys. Show me how to operate it. The Bible says they know not. Neither do they understand. And so they grow up in darkness. And the earth is out of course. Show me. I tell you, many of you as you are praying right now, God will begin to give you understanding. Show me the mystery behind the operations of wealth. Show me the mystery behind the operations of grace. Show me the mystery. What makes the spirit of God become so real to a man? Show me the secret of church growth. The secret of increase. The secret of influence. The secret of leadership. The secret of power. The secret of abundance. Show me, oh God, the mystery of doing business in deep waters of the spirit. Show me. Show me, teach me, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. Isaiah 48, verse 17. Can we project that? Let's see, I hope I'm right. Everybody read it. You are going to pray and say, Lord, this year, you are going to direct me and my life will experience increase only. He said, I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. I can teach you how to do it and lead you in the way that you should go. Lift your voice and pray. Divine direction. Let the stars shine. Let the morning stars shine, oh God. Lead me to the place of destiny. 
lead me to the next level i'm tired of confusion show me oh god show me oh god show me oh god go ahead and pray maritally give me direction oh god i cry for direction financially give me direction oh god academically lead me oh god let the star arise and let me follow the star in terms of my career lead me oh god record to secretary lead me show me in my ministry show me oh god show me give me direction pray illumination by light i am the lord that teacheth thee to profit and lead you show me show me show me oh god where you want me to be what you want me to do who you want me to connect with show me oh god hallelujah hallelujah next prayer point you're going to pray and say lord let a new dimension of unction let a new dimension of power man to my life this year lord i want to move in the anointing in a level of grace he said and he measured a thousand cubits lift your voice and pray a thousand cubits and he was to my ankle for no man can do these things except god be with him pray my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and you will anoint me with fresh oil because thou hast loved righteousness and hate wickedness therefore god even thy god had anointed you thou anointed my head with oil my cup runneth over pray lord i'm moving in the anointing pray this is the year you do business with the anointing you do your job with the anointing you minister with the anointing you conduct your activities under the influence of a heavy unction he says you have an anointing from the holy one and you know all things pray pray worship team pray we minister with the anointing media pray the anointing takes us to another level prayer band pray we are praying with the anointing regoto seketa koinonia pray this is our year of the anointing inside and outside no matter how far you are let that anointing take you walk in signs wonders miracles let the sick be healed through your life let breakthroughs let chains be broken let lives be delivered and restored let sinners be saved let the anointing make you a savior let the anointing make you a deliverer hallelujah 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 two more prayer points and we're done please everybody participate we're establishing the prophetic word right now hallelujah listen this next prayer point is very important you're going to pray listen the bible says arise it says shine and the bible says in daniel i believe 12 or 22 or so i can't remember verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heaven and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore listen you are going to pray 
it's not a selfish prayer. Don't pray for your neighbor. You are praying for yourself. You're going to say, Lord, display, show what you have put in me this year. My God, let men see the hand of God. Go ahead and pray. Unveil it. Unlock it, oh God. In 2014, my year of light, I manifest. I am a city to my family, in my department, in my faculty, in my place of work, in my place of business. Let there be a showing forth. Show forth, oh God. Show forth prosperity through me. Show forth a healthy Christian through me. Show forth holiness through me. Show forth breakthrough through me. Let me become a portrait and a piece Show forth. Manifest, oh God. Manifest, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are many of us. This is the year. Your destiny helpers are, so, so, are supposed to see you. Hold on. You are going to pray that that veil that has covered that grace of God in you, that unction, the Bible says there is this treasure. There are many of you, you have been relegated to the background. This is the year. This is the year. Say, Lord, arise in me. Come on, pray. Lord, arise. Let men see you through me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If you are looking for a vessel, I'm available. Let me be an epitome of the anointing, an epitome of wisdom, an epitome of wealth and prosperity, an epitome of leadership, an epitome of power, an epitome of revelation. Pray. Pray. Make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters, this prayer is so powerful. There are many of you that have business ideas, but nobody knows. It's an idea that can bless you and stop hunger in your family but nobody knows when light comes it exposes darkness let me show you a scripture galatians 1 galatians 1 let's just look at that one scripture galatians 1 verse 23 and 24 galatians 1 god wants to walk through you not for pride and arrogance are you getting me I'm not talking of the kind of lifting and influence that takes you to hell. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preached faith which once he destroyed. 24. Everybody read it. One to read. And what? How did they glorify God? That means when they saw what God did with my life and they said lord is this what you meant when you said you can bless people is this what you meant when you said you can use people are you ready to pray this prayer again lift up your voice say lord i'm available i'm available make a spectacle out of my life lord make a spectacle out of koinonia in 2014 Dog Sasso, let there be a display of the glory. Let the nation see we are a city on a hill. They glorified God in me. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You are going to pray for yourself now and your family. And say, Lord, it's also my year of dominion. Listen, you are going to pray. And say, Lord, I don't just want to chorus this. It must be dominion. Dominion means absolute control. Are you listening to me? Therefore, pray that for you and your family, whatever has mocked God to your face, this is the year it must come under your feet. Lift your voice and pray. Dominion, oh God. Kingdom authority. Pray. Is it finance? Is it a terminal disease? Is it lack of breakthrough? Is it sin? Your family members are not saved. Pray. Get angry in your spirit. Those outside are you praying? Those outside are you praying? Record to secretary. Total dominion. No more fibro this year. No more getting sick and getting well. No. Pray. No more prosperity today and poverty tomorrow. You will not be on fire today and backslide tomorrow. No. The part of the joss is as a shining light. It shines brighter, brighter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now you are going to pray for Koinonia. We are going to say, Lord, take us to another level. Take us to another level. Another level of impact. Another level of prosperity. Pair yourselves into three. Pair yourselves into three. Those who are lying down or praying, just leave them. Those who cannot stand, just leave them. I want us to pray seriously. Hallelujah. You're going to say, Lord, lift us up. We're not just asking for fame. We're asking for impact, salvation, transformation. Come on, lift your hands and pray. Let this place become Bethel, the place of bread. Bethel, the place of bread. If you love this ministry, pray. The ministry is not Joshua Selman. The ministry is you. Lord, a harvest of souls. A harvest of souls. A harvest of souls. A harvest of souls. Transformation, oh God. Drunkards will come here and become apostles prostitutes will come and become prophets your word is mighty and it prevails in our midst your word is mighty and it prevails in our midst this year we experience character we experience excellence at another dimension. We experience wealth and prosperity as a ministry at another dimension. Revival, oh God, let there be a fire of revival that will spark from here and spread to the nations and spread to cities and spread to campuses and spread pray pray for our friday programs pray for the counselings pray for all our external administrations pray pray for the miracle services lord let every service be a miracle service beginning from this one let every service be a miracle service let this place become a solution center. Let this place become a place 
of authentic miracles, authentic signs, wonders, breakthroughs, restoration. Let the sick come and be healed. Let blind eyes be healed. Let incurable diseases be cured. Let there be a mantle of healing, of breakthrough, of prosperity. May men come here and have their spiritual lives fired up. Fired up. Passion, oh God. Passion, oh God, for the things of the spirit. This is a place where we infect people with hunger, with passion, with fire for the things of the kingdom. Pray. This is a place of love, no discrimination, no discrimination. This is a place of love. Everyone is special. Everyone is honored. We will not teach error in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O oh winds, breathe upon this lane. And he prophesied again as commanded. And the Bible declares that the wind came, entered into these bodies without life, and they arose an exceeding great army. I believe with all my heart that's what God is going to do over someone's life. Son of man, can this situation live again? Son of man, can your life live again? Son of man, can your finances live again? Can the fire upon your life be rekindled again? Can the doors be opened again? Again means once upon a time, they were not bones. They never started as bones. They started as an army. Something happened and reduced them back to become bones that were very dry. Another incident, the Bible says that the sons of the prophet were with Elisha. And they said, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. And the Bible says he granted them permission. And while they were cutting the tree, the axe head fell. And one of the sons of the prophet said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. You thought that the prophet would sit down and say, Talk, what do we do? And he said, No, where fell it? And he showed him the place and he carried a stick. A stick. God's methodology sometimes can be strange, but it works. That's why you have to walk by faith. Listen, very simple teaching tonight, but it will change your life. And he threw that stick. And against gravity, the axe head began to float. Another time, there was hunger in the land of Samaria. The hunger was so bad that the Bible records that women were eating their children. Nigeria has not gotten to that level. I'm not sure of any nation in the world where people have been hungry. I'm not talking of cannibalism as a spirit. But that hunger will make a mother. Imagine your child and you look at your child and carry your child to the kitchen and cut your child and eat a whole child in one day. Two women. Remember that was the agreement. There was no record that they shared that child with any neighbor or anything. Imagine the hunger. That means it was not a natural hunger that will make people eat a a plate of food is not up to a child's head. Yet, two people ate a whole child. Is that a normal hunger? No. And by the next day, it was the turn to eat the child of the other woman. And she protected the child. And that was where fight came from. That means hunger can bring fight. That means one of the principles of peace is abundance. That when there is enough, there is love. There is understanding. Is that true? Hunger brought a contention between two people who were once friends. But that's not my point. The king comes and then finds out that two women are fighting and the king gets angry. 
and say, where is this man? Where is this prophet? Let's, 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 the anger. What is happening? Why is this land in a state of famine and drought? Bottom line, the news reaches the prophet and all of that, the king wanting to kill him and all of that. And then the prophet prophesies and says, by this time, if the prophet said, abundance will come, it would have never come because he did not add a time component to it. Notice that every time the prophets speak, they carry the realities in the realm of the spirit that are timeless. They are called timeless possibilities. Possibilities with no time frame attached to them. It is prophecy that allocates the time for their manifestation. Listen very carefully. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no time allocated to them. Listen carefully. What you call time is only dependent on two things. One, that your life synchronizes with God's predeterminate counsel. Are we together? Or number two, that by the power of prophecy, a time is allocated to that possibility and made to find expression on earth. It is this reality that can allow to shift things that would have happened in your yesterday but was hijacked by spirits because the realm of the spirit has timeless possibilities. Prophecy can shift what would have happened three years and bring it into your tomorrow and make it happen. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very powerful. Remember, you cannot do anything about time. Once time passes, that's it. But the Bible tells us that prophecy is able to lift things and bring them into the future and rename them and give them dates to appear again. So if a woman is supposed to have had three children in her 15 years of marriage and the devil hijacked her womb, what prophecy does is that you can speak to that woman and God will take those children that would have been and bring them and the woman will be pregnant with triplets. You see that? Prophecy. The victory of the saints is at the mercy of their understanding the operation of the kingdom. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. Please listen. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. The victory of the saints is dependent on their comprehending the operations of the kingdom. What I call the ordinances of heaven. God's system of making possibilities manifest. That is the reason why we continue to press in the spirit. Like spiritual archaeologists exploring the height, the width, the depth of the ways of God. And like archaeologists, when we find something that we think is worthy of note, we treasure it. The Bible says the kingdom is like a man who lost a pearl. Is that true? And the first thing that he did was he lit a candle and went to the room and started sweeping that room to find it. The Bible also talks about the kingdom as one who went and found a worthy jewel and sold all that he had to buy the entire plot, that entire estate. So we continue to search and the Bible says everyone that seeketh finds. If you are serious enough and desperate, the spirit of revelation will come. You will never find the secrets of the kingdom being casual. Lord, if you, if you will show me, show me. Are you not God? Open my eyes, let me see. No. You will not reward anyone who approaches you with that kind of laxity. You can discern diligence. He is the rewarder of not them that seek him. Them that diligently seek him. Lord, I won't let you go. Open my eyes. Show me the key. I, I, I admit that I don't know much, but Lord, open my eyes. And then the spirit of revelation comes. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. Daniel prayed and said, I'm not leaving this place. 
Lord, you must give me understanding about the times and the strategy and what to do. 20 and one days he was there traveling. And then the angel came, granted him access to revelation. And he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. It was not just a book like opening to read. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. So, the, you must not only know what God has prepared for you. You must continue to explore the systems allocated for making it your reality. Ephesians 4 verse 18 is an anthem in this place. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them alienated that means that your life does not become a reflection of what god has said and the bible says it doesn't mean he lied but that something about your life and my life there is a level of understanding understanding of what not just an information the ways of god are we together now please give me this this is a bottle of water look up please everyone this is a bottle of water now it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if i open this bottle i'm going to have an enjoyable experience is that true now you have given me the bottle but there is a technology to open it if you turn this thing clockwise it will not open is that true the system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes as simple as this instruction is you can die of test not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle. You can struggle turning this clockwise. And then it will look like swan water has calmed you. Whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding. Now notice that you can do this and grow old doing it. And a little child will come and say, my daddy taught me. Come, let me show you. And just turn this and in two minutes, the water is there for you to take. It's a little key that opens a very big door. How many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside? You can see the yam from the window, but you can't eat it. Why? Because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared, someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing. A small key that you can put in your pocket, yet that key kept you outside. As educated as you are, you are still outside as rich as you are have you ever lost your atm and you stand angry as rich as you are they just made a transfer and you are hungry the atm is looking at you you are looking at it the difference between you and your breakthrough is that atm imagine how small things cause big trouble small key atm that's the same way one spiritual principle you should know that may be the missing link. You've done step A, B, C, D. Step E, which is the last step, you may not know and stay there for 10 years until God by his mercy comes. For some of you, that last step is what you are getting tonight. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done what you need to do. Hannah went at Shiloh. The Bible says Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed and they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that and, and the prophet looked at her and said, I mean, what kind of irresponsibility is this? You are drunk in the temple? And she said, no, my Lord. She was communicating her travail. All had been set except prophecy. We don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom. We build as prophecies upon us. They build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. Are we together now? And the prophet spoke to her. And she had a child supernaturally. It looks very simple. I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly, jokingly. And I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed. Could this be the missing link that you have done what you know the shop is already there the goods are already there but for some strange reasons the customers do not come your certificate is already there the application has been submitted but you are building with intelligence you are building but the prophecy that will make that building finish 
the bible did not say they started building it says the building finished this is a secret that worked in my own life this is the secret that is working in this ministry they build and they finished through the power of prophecy I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy especially the creative dimension of prophecy that you can speak over someone's life you can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken let me tell you this you know I told you something anything that is a blessing is not tangible it's not physical whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing yes we say that you were blessed but the truth is you were supported blessings are always spiritual read your bible you don't bless men with what money can buy you don't bless people with material things so i can give you money you say i bless you it's true but the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding the blessing is the favor that brought that money that's what you are giving so if you have the discernment when you go to the shop you drop the money not the favor your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave and the owner of the shop just collects your money and adds it in the midst of that and he's surprised in two months he has opened another branch he doesn't know what happened whether you know a law is there or not once you engage it it works for your favor or not for your favor i jump from here by mistake i will fall gravity will not say no i'm aware he's joking it's an example no there are no examples with laws you don't swallow food and then the food says i won't reach your stomach i know you are i will i will come out when you no laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious they work bishop oyedeko would always say that god told him while he was i think in the u.s he said get down and make my people rich yet he doesn't necessarily organize business seminars or symposiums you would think that okay he should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that and then this man will say okay come with everything you are building my job is to keep speaking while you build and you find out the buildings always get completed when you build while a voice is speaking it must finish the same way a voice was speaking while God was building God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, before he would do anything, he would say, let us do it. And then he would do it. When there is your formula for building, alongside the prophetic, that building must finish, no matter what it is. Are we together now? Yes. Many of us build we get the raw materials and then we say based on this and that and that i will build this great destiny in the name of jesus we we can be well-meaning and then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise and you can't trace based on your architecture nothing is wrong that building is supposed to finish yet it does not finish because there are laws in this kingdom we build and prosper through the prophesyings not just through intentions it was bishop oyedeko who would share his experience with archbishop benson idahosa that he carried a seed you know he came and he was going to run an errand for him and he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him and he looked at him and wanted to reward him i hope i'm right with the story and then he opened you know a compartment full of money and then bishop oedeko would not take and say no i don't want this and he looked at him and blessed him and he says from today god has given you the grace of on time that before a need arises the supplies are there now that's how to bless so he can now go and build because there is prophecy listen unbelievers know this they prepare their work together 
Then they now go to dark powers and say, I'm ready to build. I'm ready for election. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the scholarship. I'm ready to build the business. I have done everything. I just returned from Harvard with my certificate. But I know that a body without a spirit is dead. Therefore, let there be prophecy on it. They carry that thing and they finish what they have started. God is a finisher. That means that when the hand of Zerubbabel begins something, that hand should complete it. But the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do, that system is largely not understood. And tonight we are going to use one of those keys. The power, not of words. There is a difference between words and prophecy. Words are utterances. They are powerful on their own. But prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy, you don't speak as you are commanded. You speak, you are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not. Brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was standing. Didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking, the gentleman got angry and called the phone. And said they should give it to him put it on the loudspeaker as i was speaking there and then the woman gave birth right there in the hospital someone that they were saying after maybe they would induce or do something or maybe a cs or so and the baby just came out like that when the systems of the kingdom are put in place you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So, we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all, but that one thing you need is the power of prophecy. Jesus went to the temple from age 12. He had been preparing and doing everything. But at age 30, he went to look for a prophet. And John said, I won't baptize you. Jesus said, you are joking. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a formula. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens. So the fact that you are carrying the word, it can be under a close heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word for breakthrough, the word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. of the Jews built it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around through the prophesying. Shalakata prakato sedekaria. Make sure you are praying.
Look at me. Words are like trays in the realm of the spirit. Come, hold this for me. No, Ejimi, don't worry. Let him do it. Hold the tray, not the water. Put it down and hold the tray. This is how words are in the realm of the spirit. It is not the words that bless you. The words carry things. Words are trays in the spirit. It is not the words that bless you. The words contain mysteries. So the word can carry a cause. The word comes to you and returns back, but the cause remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living, so they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger. When it delivers, it returns back and says, I have done what you sent me to do. Then he sends the word on errand again. Listen. Words are not just talkings. Because when Isaac, listen, blessed Jacob, Esau came and said, don't you have any other thing? He said, it is finished. Was the talking finished? So words are not just speaking. You are a boy. Yes, you say that is word in English. But in the realm of the spirit, words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life. So I can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger. The courier system is called prophecy. So you can the moment you see words coming to you, you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know, I I, I do a lot of conga and jumia. And sometimes they just call me and say, we are within vicinity. Can we come? And the moment I hear the sound of their van, do I need the van? Do I need the package? The package that comes will say conga. I quickly open the package. Then there is another package. I open everything till I get what I'm looking for. That thing, the van will return back because it needs to come back again. But what it brought is what stays with me many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking be blessed that thing is not the english it's just a word prophesied to you it transported something spiritual so when it enters your ears the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit and then the be blessed english now just goes out so you know that words were spoken and then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service but then you go back and find out your life starts changing someone who has no business blessing you and you say lord when did that happen that is why deafness is a terrible thing are we together now that you cannot hear the word cannot come the entrance of thy word so listen to me understand how this works come stand here this gentleman just stand there this is favor this is what this guy wants this is favor this is what he desperately needs and God carries that favor and puts it upon words and the messenger is not a prophet the messenger is the prophecy the prophecy is what brings it to him as many as received him meaning you can reject him the word can come but you will say it's not trade that i want i need this and then the word returns back with the gift and say i was rejected when i got to that address then when you pray again god will say by my mercy let's try again and the word comes and you don't receive it and it goes back he sent forth his word when they received the word the word he led them the word delivered them so he sent forth healing he sent forth deliverance but they were carried in a tray called words this is the mystery men receive
that's why when you see people talk about the word word most people even those who teach it they don't even really fully understand what they are saying they think it is speakings that gives you intelligence no words convey information they convey thoughts but that's not the only thing they do they are mighty systems of impartation words i can be sitting here right now and yet i'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me the minister is the word are you getting what i'm saying now that means no matter where you are the moment the words begin to come and the way god designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word so i can sit down and say lord send me a word for my breakthrough and god will say that's it everyone that ask it receive it and he puts that word and you will hear me speak casually in the name of jesus let doors be open and you say that's it you did not see that that word was carrying something you receive that word the miracle in it will start working you don't receive the healing you receive the word the healing was designed to work when the word is received when you enter a city jesus was teaching find out whether there be a house of peace when you find it there it says let what is on you rest there when you don't find anybody that receives you let your peace rest with you meaning there are things that rest return are received are rejected these are some of the things that govern the results that we get look at the wonderful that adorable lady that shared her testimony from lagos words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and hiv of 24 years when the word gets to hiv hiv is a spirit so it knows it's not words that is seen remember when men saw the word they saw a man when demons saw the word they saw the life-giving power of god they looked at jesus and ah is he not this guy this this 33 year old body is fooling people this is not 33 year old this is the ancient of days hidden in a 33 year old body but men were looking at the son of mary but principalities and powers knew what they were seeing when a prophet saw jesus he said behold the lamb you will think it's an insult you are calling me an animal he was speaking prophetically the same way you can look at gideon and say oh mighty man of fellow and Gideon says, where are you seeing this? Because the word is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water and look at your destiny, you can use the word and look. There's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion. Very powerful. So you can come here weak and then god comes to you and says no you are not supposed to be that and he says this is your image i say lord i agree i see it the word is received the power as many as received that word he gave them power that came with the word to become power to become as many as received him even to them that called upon his name he gave them power to become power to become an apostle power to become a prophet power to become prosperous power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down power to silence the voices of darkness thank you this is how fathers blessed throughout the bible all the sons knew that they didn't they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep they gave them those things but they knew it was temporal but the moment they received something on their head the fathers told them bye bye and never cared to find out are you doing well because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together let me tell you if someone counts come sam come this lady if this is a husband and wife and you greet all of them and give them plates huh? or you give them cup or a set of tea you gave them gifts not a blessing now there's nothing wrong with that they will carry those things and somebody can steal it but when you speak over their lives those
those words remain and start walking so this guy was supposed to fail remember when he gets to the place where he wants to fail that word is a spiritual buffer it starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble there was supposed to be trouble ordinarily he would have been a victim but something that was on him will move him the Lord knows how to deliver the righteous there is something that you can receive and where there is a job that is your own you find yourself moving there you are not moving something is moving you there this is what creates favor in life it looks like a repetition of coincidences everything good that is about to happen you call them they say I just heard about it must you hear about everything good then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it the same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroys i say what is is it that i'm not beautiful it's not about beauty it's about what happened that's why the bible says god can deliver men from six things yes seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men that men can use words to program something on you and just say go now you will because you didn't feel anything that word remains this gentleman is standing here he's supposed to marry her but something on her is fighting him you are supposed to get a job the person promised heaven and said and just a signature to get that job but something on you make sure that your paper is taken away from the list this is what we came to correct tonight that by the power of prophecy that that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen someone can look at you and say man of god you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate when did you get born again and you say it's not my fault it's what is on me something on me draws the right people and you find out listen listen that's why you find out there are churches you always find the right keyboardist the right drummer they are looking for pastors you find the right pastors and it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them there is a spirit somebody enters that town and says i want to come and fellowship with koinonia they didn't just come the day you are announcing your book that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city he didn't just come something on you controls everything around you so the key is not to try to change things buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head that negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life please take serious what i'm saying many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret in this kingdom we build but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy hallelujah you have applied for the job you have submitted it there's nothing you can do about it again you don't even have access to the office you can't call the director why don't you send words let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it listen remember you can't get to the office but there's something that can get there i'm not motivating you believe me and that word will rest on your employment letter and the, the man is pushing everything and he just picks yours now remember the man may not be born again so he can't explain what is happening because he operates in the three-dimensional realm the word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man and because he's empowered by god's integrity he must hear it and he looks and says who is this what tribe ah i the slot is for five people from the north who is this yoruba girl now who knows maybe she doesn't have a father or mother and they take this and you get a job that you sit down and say ah, ah, what is this again if you don't believe this 
then I welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squalor that comes upon arrogant people. You see people that you think don't deserve it, but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them. Are we together? In the Bible, every time fathers were releasing their children, they would tell them, place your hand upon my thigh. And they would place their hand and speak. Speak over their lives. And say, I've finished. Go. Whoever comes again, they say the word has finished. I can talk to you. I can counsel you. But if it's that thing you are looking for, it has finished. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because we are going to be very, very fast tonight. And I want you to believe. The moment words are coming, don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system. They are spirits. You have to discern it. They are spirits. Oh, may God lift you. It's not just by shouting amen. May God lift you. So the word is coming with a grace for lifting. You receive the word, but you are searching. Where is the grace? And that grace is on you. You go expecting to be lifted. It's as if life owes you lifting. Because there is a word there. And you will be surprised to see the way things just open. Are you ready to pray? Find a corner in the next two, three minutes. I'd like you to declare. Declare and pray. Please pray. Take it seriously. The things that must shift in your life. The things that must change in your life. Is called a miracle service. Especially for those of you who came from far. Please believe. in the spirit that there are handwritings there are ordinances 
that are written upon men like a stigma, like a karagma. The mystery of the tragedy of Jabez was a word that became his name by his mother. And Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Lord, I'm tired of this situation. It's not my fault that I came from this family. Words are erasers. They can erase anything. They can erase anything. Because those words are backed by the blood of the eternal covenant. They can erase curses. They can erase yokes. They can erase witchcraft. They can erase pronouncements. Someone spoke against you. Spoke against your family. And said it will never be good with you. Words are erasers. For some of us, before you need something to come upon you, you need something to be taken out of you. Open your mouth and pray. And say something must be erased from my destiny. Those negative dreams. Bad luck. I love the Lord. I serve him with all my heart. Blotting out every handwriting. And every ordinance that spoke against us. He nailed it to the cross. one or more social media platforms and a system was programmed that when you forget your password there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page and for some reason you can forget your password there is a provision there it will ask you have you forgotten your password and then it will try to do one two three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You, it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, open your mouth. Whatever left me that should not leave me, you must return back. Opportunities, dimensions in the spirit. Glory, the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you're the lifter up of my head. Hey, but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield. you to cooperate with me 
I want us to finish very fast. And so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time. But I want you to please believe. Are we together? Words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life. Was it not because Jonah entered a boat? Innocent people on a voyage. A man carried something. Entered their boat. They lost properties. Lost. They were about to lose their life. And they said, what is the cause of this? And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution, he didn't say, counsel me. Throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch, you don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements. You must carry them and say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my By the spirit of might, in the name of Jesus, that you will do a quick walk in this place. I pray, oh God, that within the next few minutes, visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual, but Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three, my God. I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four get ready now five let that fire right now in the name of jesus everything in your life that must leave i declare right now by the power that is in the name of jesus the son of the living god by the fire of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ bring them out outside everywhere overflow one two three the roadside online i decree and i declare by the anointing of the holy ghost the word of god brings every evil from out of their hiding place i declare and i prophesy i send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family into every destiny and i declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of god tonight Therefore, I declare judgment, judgment upon the hand of the wicked. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, judgment upon the wicked, judgment upon the wicked. Hallelujah. The spirit I'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors. Listen, over life, if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open, no matter what you do, something is about to happen to you now. Lift your hands. Father, I declare, anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors, shakatabata, now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of Jesus. I judge that spirit. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I command those spirits. I challenge those forces. I send the word. Doors open. Ordinances that close doors. Let doors be open now. Over lives, over destinies. Be open now. Outside, be open inside. Be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet. And I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium. And I'm going to speak now. When I speak, those chains that I see, Sakotos Katabarakatojetia, you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service. Lord Jesus, I declare, anyone being tied down by any chain, I declare right now, let the fire of the barakata. it could be chains that are territorial, it could be chains of wickedness. I command a release 
right now in the name of Jesus I command the release right now I command the release right now a release right now a release right now I didn't see what I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi state Kogi state you know what happens when God shows me this that means people from that state the power of God begins to touch them right now in the name of Jesus I declare the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region when you are from that region the power of God meets you I decree and declare now in the name of Jesus Christ complete freedom complete freedom the power of God is still coming go this state I decree and I declare if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit bring them out please overflow one lift your hands I stretch my hands right now I'm seeing a very strange fire people will start running from overflow one I'm, I've not prayed that prayer but I'm seeing a grace for speed this is the spirit of delay being broken overflow one in the name of Jesus I declare may that grace come upon people right now they will begin to run by the spirit run by the spirit bring them out in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ we are going to pray for the sick shortly but the Lord is asking me to stand here I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here just right here I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing right here I decree and I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus let the yokes of darkness the ordinances of witchcraft let it be broken right now let it be broken right now for sick people now but I'm seeing the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus, Sakato Barakata, and Takata, Rakata Bakatos, movements in the body. I cause it now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here, I take it out of your body now. I take it out of your body now. Look at me, my dear, this lady. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands now. I saw fire coming on you. Right now, I declare that devil must let you go I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost now be set free in the name of Jesus all those in front I declare the count of three the spirits that manifested must let you go I speak as one sent from God at the count of three let them go one two three go 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 out of their lives and out of their destinies in the name Jesus Christ how many 
many people are trusting God for jobs. You are trusting God for a job. Just keep your hands lifted. I just saw something that looked like a parcel. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm stretching my hands. Fire is leaving my hands. I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit. And it's come not everybody. But in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are designed to receive miracle jobs through these impartations. Where are they, oh God? I send your anointing. Kalato Sebahasha. In the name of Jesus, let there be miracle jobs to those people by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Who is Yakubu? Oh my God. Now, I want us to pray for the sick. Who is Yakubu? Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol, come. Your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around one finances two i'm seeing you climbing ladders in the spirit and i decree and declare over you it must be so right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ if i start speaking one by one time sir please come this man come sir god is about to change your life come Where are you coming? Please stand up, please stand up, sir. Where are you coming from? From Sabongari. I want to pray for you. Where do you stay? Sir, I don't mean to scare you. Are we together now? I'm not a prophet of doom. But this you're coming here now has saved you from dying. You have been having dreams. You have been having dreams. Dreams. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Dead people. Yes, you see dead them. people in dreams. I have seen them. This is what I'm saying. If you did not come here, I saw that you were somewhere around PZ and a car just came. You're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you. That's how they left you on the ground there. But in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit behind, why am I saying God is saving families from the spirit of death? I just saw like an arrow right now. Any family here, any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ freedom death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus God of wonders will do wonders in their lives. I agree with them very quickly. Please don't doubt what you are doing. Those who are standing, trust God to touch you. Trust God to return with a testimony. Who have come with all kinds of situations. Arise, O oh God, in your power. Wrought wonders in the name of Jesus. Let your people return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Quickly, please. Please. Um, accept the people speak to you and I would, please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush. As hands are laid on you, please believe. Don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me. It's a corporate grace that is working here. And for those of us who are seated, the worship team will be ministering, but don't just sit and just be looking I like you to believe because immediately after this I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God to turn things around if you have your prayer request while the service is going on whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people PR protocol please join the people so that we'll make it fast Lord we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you and as we worship in your presence there is he 
the Holy Spirit gentle touch is flowing Jesus I believe Jesus there is healing in your name Say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree and declare 
that every delayed promise say it again that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month lift your voice and pray 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 delayed promise Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step into. Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that will save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I'd like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life open your mouth and mention every area of your life lord i would have gotten admission 10 years ago but for some reason i was delayed give me speed give me speed this is not a ritual this is not a formality there is an anointing there is a grace there is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers paul said for this cause i paul bow my knees i bow my knees i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you i bow my knees that he may grant unto you i bow my knees that he may grant unto you i bow my knees that he may grant unto you halato shake it take it take it bala i bow my knees that he may grant unto you shelekete parousia visit impossible situations oh god of heaven
in the name of Jesus Christ father I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit you have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery father I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve things that if we see with the eyes of men it will even challenge our faith my God surprise everyone please agree with me surprise everyone in the name of Jesus Christ let every need represented here whatever that need is I agree right now in the name of Jesus the son of the living God let every need here be turned into a miracle any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered may the fire of judgment come upon them now remember all blessings come from God through men to you all blessings live from Satan through men away from you all blessings come from God through men to you all blessings live from Satan through men so whether it's from God or from Satan men play a role I say it again in the name of Jesus everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role to sabotage what God has answered what he has done in your life let the fire of judgment rest upon them now let me give you an instance if God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you you know what that man has done he didn't just kill you he stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family I'm saying it again any human agent if you don't like it just say amen to the one you believe but any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life may the word of God rest like fire upon them when a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years the guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years it was after two years by the mercy of God he said I remember my wrong so he acknowledged it was wrong I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you may they remember their wrong and may they correct it anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now and by some activity of darkness it has not yet touched your head I declare may that unction rest on you now may that unction rest on you now may that unction rest on you now I taught you about words never forget words are trains God is serving you something he's only using words are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again don't say you have said it before remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying not once Jesus your Jesus Touch the eyes of a man and he said what do you see this is the word touching a man's eyes he said I'm seeing but I see men like trees Jesus said nonsense he touched his eyes again and he saw men clearly if he if he was left like that listen we want to we want to destroy the spirit 
that are bought complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work. What my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family. That in the name of Jesus, whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Now, let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. You know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work or whether it's a prayer group a fellowship i stretch my hands i strengthen your hands in the spirit fresh fire upon the work that you do in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone in anger who made any pronouncement over your life it could even be your biological parents I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare. The spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition. I curse that spirit from its root now. Let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job. I don't care how long you have waited. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, I speak to you. May the Lord surprise you. The Lord is showing me a medical doctor that an appointment is coming from, from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. 
as I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood-sucking spirits will curse you. Pray! We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos. Peace in Adamawa, peace in Benway. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love, the spirit of unity. Christians, Muslims, free thinkers, that together in the name of Jesus, there will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one, make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of this we are matured believers we must have the wisdom to be able to respond this is not about Christians it's not truly about Muslims it's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of God so the issue is not just about Christians it's not just about Muslims and all of this my perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being regardless of religion acts wicked on his own accord they are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds so when we challenge the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal so we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit these are the spirits that can use anybody if brothers kill brothers then anybody can kill anybody when the spirits are at work our responsibility as believers at, is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulate the destinies of people number two please there are families that have lost loved ones if there is any way you can support them whether in prayer or through whatever means it is a very welcome development are we together and then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Jos, Adamawa, Benway. We will continue to pray and speak peace. 
he says give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem so we will continue to pray but it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death the bible calls the death of a fool are we together now it is wise that we are vigilant by god's grace whatever information we have a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information and if there is any cause for concern or any action there is an intelligence system to reach everyone avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around your job is just to continue to pray for believers that have for any reason gone to be with the lord it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things when believers go to be with the lord let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope while we continue speaking life let me balance this because if if god forbid but if i die today it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of god for the saints so on one side while you weep and mourn for what has happened the word of god is bigger than any man i'm saying this because sometimes satan uses these things to discourage the body of christ let god be true and every man including the best of us be a liar so make sure you continue to stand on your convictions be sympathetic to people don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people but maintain your stand and your conviction about the integrity of what god has said should be are we together now i speak to everyone here the covenant of protection you have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of i declare in the name of jesus the grace that has protected us the grace that has protected this this ministry may that grace speak in your life i forbid the earth nor the sword from receiving your body in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you like we prophesied october is not done yet between now and 31st of october in the name of jesus the balance of what must enter your hand may the god of heaven arise and put it in your hand you are here and you are saying apostle i need jesus there was a brief charge today and while you were speaking the spirit of the lord was convicting me that i need jesus or number two that i need to make my ways right with jesus i love jesus but i feel a need for a restoration please wherever you are we have just a minute or two for you i'd like you to boldly leave your seat please every time we make an altar call like this give the people chance to come don't intimidate them let there be no movings and let the people come wherever you are you are saying apostle if you will lead me to jesus i will gladly hand over my life to him wherever you are i want to pray for you please leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here god bless you for your boldness people are coming outside are you coming make your way quickly god bless you make your way jesus is talking to someone this is a time when you should hearken to his voice god bless you god bless you god bless you if you're coming from outside please run you will need to double up run quickly i want to pray now let's celebrate those who are coming let's encourage them no man comes to jesus except you are drawn by him god bless you keep coming god bless you there are still a few people we give you a few seconds run quickly join them those online you're connecting online be ready to pray the prayer with us there's no time there's no distance god bless you keep coming i see a gentleman coming i see you god bless you god bless you god bless you hallelujah praise the lord i salute all of you who are standing whether giving your heart to jesus for the first time or rededicating your life may the lord bless you lift your right hand quickly those joining join quickly i'd like you to say this sincerely from your heart jesus is here and he loves you always ready to give you a new beginning the bible says to him that is joined to the living there is hope say after me lord jesus look at this my adorable children make sure you say lord jesus too dear ones say lord jesus i believe in you 
that you are the son of God tonight I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask that you be my savior you be my Lord you be my king I believe that Jesus died for me I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification right now I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that I am saved I'm a child of God amen Jesus thank you for these ones you have drawn them by your spirit let the grace that saves let the grace that keep rest upon these ones in the name of Jesus Christ they will go from glory to glory I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the door is open for you to a new and a better life in the name of Jesus from today you move forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray amen I salute you once again thank you for this very bold decision please follow the lady smiling at you with her hands waving at you just follow her and there will be a group of people to just address you please cooperate with them very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you